Hey y'all, Jesse Pearson here with Let's Make Art. I like to do mixed media art and art journaling, but today I have a fun project for you that we like to do called Let's Make Art Matter. Every month we get together as a community to do something that we can put good vibes out in the world. And today we're gonna do that for our friend, Katie. 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 Um, Katie lived a normal life of a 15 year old only to have her world flip upside down overnight. She has recently been diagnosed with lymphoma and is working hard to get stronger after completing her chemo and radiation treatments. We want to cheer Katie on and give her a much needed boost of love during this time of her life. Um, let's show her how strong and loved she is one postcard at a time. Yes. So that's who we're going to do our postcard for today. Nice. And I thought it might be fun. So do you remember this project that we did with the butterfly? We are going to do a similar butterfly project, but a little different. We're gonna do this. And it's a little different than the other butterfly because we're not focused on the outline with a map, but we are going to focus on the inside doing being a little different. Do you notice a little something different there, Keenan? I have to zoom in with my eyeballs here. here. Well, I'm gonna put it down so we can but see it on the top camera. It looks like a ribbon. Yeah, it's a ribbon, and that is the color green, which is um, significant for the type of cancer that she has. So I thought that would be neat to do. So we're going to start out with a butterfly outline that we used last time for, well, not last time, but the other project we did with a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And I like to get this kind of centered on there. Now my butterfly is not quite centered on this paper, but I'm just going to hold it up to the light. If you have a window or something like that, you could do that. Okay. I think that's, it's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna put that like that, and then I'm gonna get my handy dandy graphite paper. And I'm gonna use the shiny side. I'm gonna push that under here, under there, under here, under there. Okay, under just like where? that. I'm not, I didn't say it. <laughs> I, am a, I have two older brothers, and I fell for that a lot growing up, but I didn't do it today. Got Keenan though, we got Keenan. That's Kenan. right. That's right. <laughs> Did I introduce you, Keenan? As we're in the camera, Kenan's he's also here. our yeah, art cheerleader slash hype man. Today, we're going to be Katie's hype man. Yes. As a giant team. Yeah. So we're going to trace this butterfly onto our paper, and we're going to do it lightly because we're going to do this squash on there. Okay? So we're going to start out doing that. Let's do it. Now, I have used this once already to trace the butterfly. I already have pencil lines on here, so it might be tricky to remember where... I traced. Now if that is the case for you, then you can just lift it up and check that you got it all traced. No big deal. I think this is going to be so fun to paint with gouache. Make sure we get it outlined. Is there a season for butterflies in Missouri, Keenan? Ooh, that's an excellent question. I don't know. I know that the... Like, when were we more likely to see them? I know that the monarch butterfly has a migration season. And they travel a large distance. Well, but that's cool. Only, How large of a distance do they travel normally? Like, thousands of miles really yeah and they only live long enough to make the migration once so every generation is a different every migration is a different generation well it's completely instinctual maybe our postcards will travel thousands of miles to katie depending on where they're being made that would be awesome okay i'm gonna check make sure i got it all traced because i started talking and i forgot what i did I think I just need a little bit right there. But that's okay if I don't have that on there. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I got so excited tracing this, I forgot that I was going to leave the middle part blank. <laughs> well, that's all right. I think it kind of erases a little bit. We'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah, it kind of erased a little bit. Well, that was probably good that I did that. So if you did that, we did it together. Okay, now I'm gonna sketch out that little ribbon shape right where we did this. So I'm gonna start out with this part. I'm gonna loop around. And that's so funny that I forgot. <laughs> that's like my favorite part about this is the ribbon. Well, I like a lot of parts about it. But. <laughs> There's a lot to like. Okay, just a rough sketch. I'm overthinking this, y'all. It's fine. It looks great. It looks great, Jesse. Thank you, Keenan. Oh, I got nervous. Oh, yeah, that's looking better. All right. We'll just make this loop like this. Yeah, like that. Okay, we got it sketched out. Now for the fun part, you can paint it. So you can, you can do that ribbon. It's just an oval shape. You can erase until you get it how you want it. No big deal. Okay, we're gonna use our gouache. I'm just gonna dispense some of this paint on this palette for us. Um, you could also use your palette that came with your kit, your little travel palette, but just so you can see me mixing really easily, I'm gonna use this. Got our black. And gouache is so fun because it's kind of like watercolor, but then it can be opaque and it dries with a really nice matte finish. So it's different than acrylic in that way and it is water soluble, so it can be reconstituted. So if you have something like this in a palette, you can use it again, which is nice. It is nice. You can actually scoot your butcher tray to the left if you want. I would love to do that. Thank you. I'll just move that over too. Okay. Let's get started. All right, I'm using a number eight brush. Just gonna get that wet. And I'm gonna get my orange. And I'm gonna water it down just a little bit. Because you can start out light and get darker, but if you start out dark and it was too dark, then it's kind of hard to take back, you know? Yeah, that So makes it's sense. a safe, safe way to start. Um, and actually, I kind of like distinguishing this little bit of difference between these two wings. I'm just going to sketch that in real fast. Sorry, I got you all excited about painting. Then I got my pencil back out. Okay. I just thought that might help get my, place my orange where I wanted it. All right, okay. So I'm gonna start with this little burst of orange in here. Now, this is a made up butterfly in my head. This is not like a real butterfly. <laughs> this is not necessarily accurate. No, but if, if that gets you excited, like if you wanna look up a butterfly and paint it similar to one that you like, then you could do that. But this isn't, this isn't, if there's a likeness, it is a coincidence. <laughs> so you can see I'm starting out light and I'm just going to add more opac opacity, opaque layers as we go. And I can add another layer that's darker. You can even play around with blooms if you wanted to because it does act a lot like watercolor. And since our postcard is on watercolor paper, you can get some really nice textures if you like that. Now I also have orange on the outer edge, so let's do a little bit of that. I like that orange a lot. Isn't it just so vibrant? Yes. And this is not even like full power, like I'm not doing a heavy part of it. So we can build up that orange in just a minute. 
I just thought instead of trying to make it look like a specific butterfly, it would just be fun to just paint it. Oh, yeah. You know, just go for it. Now I'm thinking about this shape, like, you know, it's not like a perfect shape. I'm just kind of adding those little, uh, you know, the butterfly has like those little individual cells. Oh, yeah. So I'm sort of doing an impressionistic <laughs> Um, approach to that, so I'm not drawing each and every little cell and outlining it. Although you could, and if you enjoy that, then go for that. Yeah. I'm just mimicking the idea of those with the brush strokes that I'm using. It's more efficient that way. Yeah, it's just a style choice. It's oh. whatever you want, but I guess it could be also efficient if you want to look at it that way. I do like both the styles, though. Both options are nice to look at. Mm -hmm. I just happen to enjoy painting this way more yeah. than the other way, but it can be satisfying to make something look just like something else, too. So it's all about whatever you're into. And you could play around with color combinations. Katie could get all kinds of different water, um, colored butterflies, and that would be fun. So don't feel like you have to do what I'm doing. You don't even have to do a butterfly for that matter, right? There's no rules with Let's Make Art Matter. I don't think so. No, you can do whatever you want. I tried thinking about it and there were no rules that came to mind. I'm glad you're thinking about it. Yeah. Because I'm painting and it's hard for me to think. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I love painting. Because I just get to be in the moment doing that. And you know, sometimes it's nice to just stop thinking about your own life for a second and make something for someone else. Just feels good to do good, you know? Uh, 100%, I know that feeling. I used to do a lot of service projects growing up in the, in the youth programs that I was in. Yeah? Yeah, I love service projects. Do you have a favorite memory of one you wanna share with us? Ooh. Putting you on the spot, huh? I don't have a favorite one, but we would clean a lot of cemeteries, and my mom would do a lot of genealogy, and I would I would be her tag along buddy. Yeah. So we would go to these old cemeteries, and clean them up, and then my mom would come in, and she would use paper, and she would transfer the words that weren't able to be seen mm -hmm. onto paper, almost like our graphite paper. Oh, so like rubbings. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Well, like if you put something over a texture and you use a pencil or like yeah. paper, yeah. then you get the texture. So right. if there was words there that you couldn't read, but they still had some dimension to it, mm -hmm. then it would pop up. Like when you trace, like exactly. rub over it, okay. just like that. And then she would research those people's genealogical uh, ancestry in the area. That's so cool. Yeah, so I also, that because of that, that I also got to go to a lot of courthouses, and I, was, I got to see a lot of vault-like um, record storage in city halls and courthouses and stuff. Mm. Okay, so I, want, I, want, I have more questions about that, but I want to stop and nope, say good. what we're doing here. So I did a lighter orange, and then I kind of hit some of the dots or speckles that you might see on a, on a butterfly. And I didn't really try to make it super symmetrical, although you could. I'm just going for it, right? Totally. Okay, I think I want to do like another lighter wash of the orange coming out. And as you layer over these and you get some more, see how doing another um, hit hitting that over that now you've gotten some layers I'm not sure how to explain what I'm saying <laughs> I used to have an art teacher that whenever the paint brush hit the paper he stopped talking like he literally like his brain switched to the other interesting um yeah and I'm like do I do that I don't know yes <laughs> I think I do it's like yep um paintbrushes on the paper okay so that's kind of fun this may turn out different it does for me every time I'm gonna put a little more orange in that little spot okay and then we can we can switch over to the yellow there is a back to what you're talking about Kenan there is an app now called find a grave I think is what it's called hmm. where a lot of people volunteered time to 
put in information in different cemeteries so that people who do genealogy could access that. Wow. And I was able to look up um, uh, my great grandpa's um, gravestone, cool. see a picture of it and all the information that was on there. It was really cool because I've never been to that cemetery, but I could see no all that because someone volunteered and spent their time serving. So cool. That is cool. Okay, now I'm going to add the yellow in the spaces that I didn't do the orange. So, you know. And it's okay if it overlaps or if you leave white space, it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't have to be complicated. Ooh, I'm thinking I might want to have a couple of little bursts of texture there. So while the paint's still wet, you can kind of drop in some pigment and see what it does. Maybe it'll do a little, uh, what do you call it in watercolor? Bloom? Yeah, a little bloom, maybe it won't. It's all right. Yeah, 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 I like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get some more yellow, water it down just a titch. And we'll come in with another layer in here. Oh, that was a lot of water. Starting to look like a butterfly. Totally looks like a butterfly. I'm just enjoying this so much, it's hard for me to talk at the same time. I was gonna say something, <laughs> and then I forgot what it was. I feel like I'm being very quiet today. Too. <laughs> oh yeah, that was fun. Drop in a little bit more pigment in those spots. Oh yeah, I like that. Looks like it might bloom a little bit, right? Okay, so I'm gonna let that yellow area dry a little bit. Maybe we'll work back into it some more. And we can mix our green for the ribbon while we're waiting for that. So we could just work in another spot. That's my trick for being impatient. Just work in a different spot. Nice. So I'm gonna get a little blue. And a little yellow to make our green for the ribbon. Isn't that such a pretty green, those two colors together? I love it. It's like the color of my shirt, actually. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that on purpose, but. I was trying to think of things that it reminded me of, but I did not do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Keenan needs to eat lunch. Keenan needs some snacks for sure. Sorry, I'll be Isn't better. it so fun? how isn't it so funny how food really does affect your I don't know I can be like a hangry girl and I can start a fight when I'm hungry and not even realize it and my good husband who knows what to do will just give me a, a granola bar or something and be like do you want to talk about this after you eat this <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yep yep I can do that I can recognize what's happening now that you pointed it out Will you bring your head back? Yep. Up? Thank you. I just got so excited about that green. I just I know, wanted to be a, right there. I like that green a lot. <laughs> like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, well, let's let this dry for just a second and then we'll work on the next area. Okay, our little butterfly is looking more dry. So we can go on to the next step. And if you have a number one brush, you can do that. Or you can use your number eight brush because you get a pretty good line with this. Yeah. So either one. I just happen to have one of these here, so I'm going to do that. And we're just going to do a black accent we just happen to have a lot of art supplies here. we just happen to yeah it's fine 
I can show you both ways if you want. I don't know. What if you do half the butterfly with the Z, the one, and then half the butterfly with the eight? All right. And then you can see the difference really well. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna get in here. That. I think that if you're nervous about doing an outline, just do it a little bit at a time, like this, instead of going like all around. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like the idea of some of the black being part of the wing design, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it can be a little, a little thicker in some spots. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Got a lot. little bubble of water on my brush. I was making me crazy. All right. We can do that. Get in there. You can exaggerate the shape of your wing too like that just come in here and do that and come in show that little division of the wing there you want to watch your head a little yeah, bit perfect i would love to not be in the way i don't want to be in the way okay here we go around there And I think maybe in this area, I'll do a couple of little black dots because that's fun. That maybe is fun. just get crazy. You know, this is different every time I do it because mm -hmm. it's just I'm having fun. And that's what I hope you're doing. I hope you're just having fun. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, I'm going to come back. This postcard's really spinning nicely for me. Have you noticed <laughs> this? It's like I feel like I have a lazy Susan. I think it's because it's just bowed up a little bit enough. I was going to mention a lazy Susan earlier when yeah? you were spinning, uh, when we were filming earlier, yeah. It would be a really interesting th way to spin your paintings if you put it all on, put them all on a lazy Susan. Yeah, I have a cutting mat for quilting that's pretty cool, that's like that, where you can like cut and then turn it and then cut it again. Hmm. It's pretty nifty. Hmm. Pretty nifty. Are you gonna switch brushes? Um, not yet. Not yet. I still gotta do. I thought you were gonna accidentally forget, quote unquote. Oh yeah. <laughs> this guy. I just thought I would do this part. Mm -hmm. My line is a little heavy there. I like it. I, I like that too. That's cool. I'm trying to do the whole side with his brush. And then we gotta do one antenna. Schmat, schmat. Hmm? I said schmat, schmat, like smart, smart. Oh, I like it, I like it. W wicked schmat. <laughs> All right, so that's with the one brush. Let's see what we can do with this eight. Now that Keenan just challenged me. I mean, it does help that if this is a newer brush. Oh, yeah. See, so you can get a kind of fine line there. Concentration mode. Yep. I like to say some brushes are more thirsty than others because they like to hold on to water. Mm -hmm. I feel like that brush is really good at holding on to water. Yep. Posture. <laughs> you can definitely get a little bit thinner line with that other one and you have a little more control, which is the advantage by having more than a few, like having another brush. Oh yeah. But you can still do it. We gotta do a couple of those little 
Dots. Can't forget the dots. You know, I like doing dots just for fun. It's a good time. I like dipping dots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> been a while since I had dipping dots. Mm -hmm. Where do you get those? Do you, can you get those around here? Oh, I don't think I've had them since last July. Probably can't get them around here somewhere. Do they sell them at the grocery store? Maybe. I don't think my children have experienced dipping dots. I feel like I failed them as a mom. Maybe when it comes to desserts. Actually, that's not true. You make some pretty good brownies. It's all about the quality of the chocolate that you're using. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my other one. But you can do either one. I just want to be able to... Yeah, like that. Uh, that is a lot more control. It is. You can do more style with the other one. Well, it's just got a thicker one here. We're just having fun anyway. Having a good time. And Kato will love this card. Yes. Send a little happy butterflies her way. I like it. And if you get a value that's like super dark like that and everything else is light, you can always get go back and add that value in somewhere else to balance it out. That's what I like to do. The spinning, the old spinning butterfly here. <laughs> you know how butterflies fly. They just, you know, they're just whimsical and they flip back on themselves and they spin around. The same idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to kind of cut into that other wing too. Let's do that really fast. When I'm detail mode, I get like whispery. I just notice that. Yeah, you do. I'm like, and then you're going to do this. I don't want to yell, mess it up. All right. I'm loving this butterfly. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, um, I did several versions of this butterfly just playing around, but I kind of like this wash that I did just sort of to tone the paper, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna use my number eight brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow, because it's kind of a warm, let's see, what did I do there? Yeah, and a little bit of black, or you can mix the other colors and get a similar tone. See that? It's kind of like a aged paper color. <laughs> it's the aged paper yellow. You know, the old, old yellow. Old yeller. And I'm gonna just kind of come in there, just put it wherever I want it. It's having a good time. Is that showing up? I mean, it's such a light value. It is. It shows up on the uh, side cam. Okay, great. You can see it on both, but the side cam especially. Okay, I've got a little, I mix that a little darker this time and I'm going to put some on the corners just for fun. And if you're like, oh, that's too dark, I don't know if I like that, then you can just come in, get your brush wet, get the excess off, and kind of just scrub it out. And then that kind of softens it. So this is very much like using watercolor in this respect. Mm. But then you get this really nice pigment and the more opaque, that word is hard for me, <laughs> opaque um, layers. Less transparent. Yes. Come in here. And I'm noticing while I'm looking at this that my butterfly has a little bit more white space on that left wing. So as a finishing touch, now that I'm looking at it, you just kind of look at it and see, okay, does everything feel balanced and good? 
I need a little more, a little more yellow and orange there. I'm gonna put a little more yellow this way. And maybe a little more orange the other way. And if it runs in together, then that's all right. Could be cool. Now, if I do that, I might have to do it on the other side. Oh, because I like that. <laughs> All right, we're doing it on the other side, and then we're going to do it. Done. We're just... Yeah, that looks nice. Having fun. Thanks, Keenan. Yeah, I'm just... Push over some blooms there. Nice. Ugh. So pretty. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. I love the the wash behind the butterfly. Yeah, just subtle. Yeah, that aged thing. I just wanted it to feel kind of kind of vintagey. Yeah, vintagey. That's the word. Okay, I think we did it. I know, I think I failed to mention um, a few things about our Let's Make Art Matter program that we do here. This postcard comes in the subscription box, already um, ready to go with an address on the back to our recipient and a stamp. But if you're not a subscriber, don't worry, you can still make a postcard and you can email our customer happiness team at Hello Let's Make Art and get the address. And um, like we said, you don't have to make a butterfly, you don't have to make it this way, you can do whatever you want. Um, we just want to invite you to send some good vibes to Katie and we're so glad that you hung out with us today and painted this and we can't wait to see what you make. If you'd like to share it, you can share it on our Facebook group, Let's Make Art Journals, and that's all I got for today. We'll see you. Bye.